Got some past exam questions here about the amines topic. So if you wanted to test yourself, you can download the questions from the link in the description. And then when you're ready for the answers, just play the video. Okay, so the first question is test our knowledge of directing groups. So you can see I've written up there, NO2 is a three directing group and NH2 is a two, four directing group. So the correct answer there is C. Question two, first bit's okay, second bit's not very nice at all, so I'll take my time explaining that bit. So the first thing, I've got to write an equation for the industrial preparation of MEA, and we're told that it's re made by reacting ammonia with epoxy ethane. We're given the structure for epoxy ethane, so I'll just draw that up now. So that's reacting with ammonia and H3. And it's forming, we're given the formula, H2N, CH2, CH2OH. Okay, so to try and explain part two, I've drawn up the equation and you can see I've used colour coding there. So in my head, I'm thinking, right, what's happened to you? The, the, this ring has broken open and it's kind of flicked over like that. And the hydrogen from the ammonia, so it's got three hydrogens. One of the hydrogens has gone on that oxygen there, and the rest of the ammonia, so the NH2, has gone onto the end here and formed that CH2NH2 group. So if you look at the atoms in the new substance can compare it to the MEA, you'll see that the only difference is another molecule of epoxy ethane. So I've drawn the MEA up and another epoxy ethane to get those extra atoms. And I'm now going to use kind of this approach to explain what's happened. So this bond in the ring's going to break. We're going to flip that over like that. And we can basically join the two parts together. And when you do that, you can see that you form this molecule here, which has that molecular formula. Next part of the question is basically checking that we know that the NH2 group in amines is a base. So in other words, it can accept H plus ions from acids. So the first structure would look like this. So the nitrogen from the NH2 group in MEA has accepted the H plus from the HCl and obviously the Cl minus ions left over. So you just draw them side by side like that. And when it reacts with hydrogen sulfide, you'll take one of these H's as an H plus, then N is going to accept that. So it becomes NH3 plus again. What's left of the hydrogen sulfide? HS, but it'll have a minus charge on it. So you could draw that. Or you might have gone for this version here where um, you've got two moles of MEA and each one's accepted an H plus ion because there's two in H2S and you've got the S2 minus ion as well. Question three, explain why amines can behave as bases, and that's because the nitrogen on an amine has a lone pair of electrons which can accept an H plus ion, forms a date of covalent bond with the H plus ion, or you could call it a coordinate bond. Next part of question three is pretty much the same as what we had here. So we've got to come up with the formula of the salts that will be formed when an excess of ethyl amine reacts with those two acids, sulfuric and ethanoic acid. So there's the first one. On sulfuric acid, there are two um, protons that it can donate. So you need two moles of ethyl amine to accept those two moles of H+. Each nitrogen can accept one H plus ion. So we'd get this salt here. And ethanoic acid only has one proton to donate. It's monobasic, so you just need one mole of each. Question four, now we've got to come up with a two-step synthesis that would take us from salicylic acid to this drug molecule here. The only change is we need an NH2 group onto this carbon here. And you can't do that in one step. So you've got to go to an NO2 group first, so nitrate it. Then you would reduce it to the NH2 group. So step one looks like that. Um, just to note that you don't need concentrated nitric acid when you react in a phenol. Remember, phenols are more reactive than benzene. So you don't need conch nitric acid, you don't need 50 degrees C, and you don't need the concentrated sulfuric acid catalyst. And step two, remember we said we needed to reduce this nitro group to the amino group. So you do that by using tin and concentrated hydrochloric acid 
and the equation, you represent the reducing agent with this h in square brackets, and to get it to balance you need 6 moles of reducing agent, and you make 2 moles of water. And the final part of the question, we've actually already seen this before, explain how this molecule is able to react with acids. The lone pair on the nitrogen of the NH2 can accept a proton. Question 5 now, so we've got to complete the um, boxes for the chemicals and the organic products. Effectively we're going from benzene through a couple of stages to 4-chlorophenylamine. So we've got to be careful here that we do the steps in the right order, otherwise we're going to get the wrong product. So I'll give the right order first and then I'll explain what the wrong order would lead to. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to get that chlorine on. So we're going to react benzene with Cl2 and an AlCl3 catalyst, okay? Or you could use FeCl3. So that's going to give us chlorobenzene and I'll put the chlorine on the left because that's where it is in the final product. So we now need to put, effectively we need to get an NH2 group onto the benzene ring. We can't do that in one step, we saw that in the previous question. So we're going to nitrate it. Um, so to do that, because this is benzene effectively and not phenol, so to do that we need concentrated nitric acid, concentrated sulfuric acid, and you also need 50 degrees C, 50 to 55 degrees C, but it only wants the chemicals, so that wouldn't be necessary there. So that's going to give us this product here, sorry my writing's terrible, so you get that. And then all we've got to do is convert this nitro group into the amino group, and you've just seen that, it's done by reacting with tin and concentrated HCl. Okay, so I've lost all of that now, I'm going to do it in the wrong order now, so instead of chlorinating it first, we're going to nitrate it first. So if you nitrate this, you're going to get the NO2 group there. Now if you did the chlorination step next, the nitro group actually directs to position 3. So you'd end up with the chlorine going here, which is obviously not going to give us the correct final product. So you get that. Then obviously when you reduce that, that would go to NH2, but you've got the chlorine in the wrong position. Okay, so the final question, we've got to suggest a way of making ethylamine, so this substance here, from ethene via a two-step process. So what do we need to do to ethene first, and then what do we need to do to that to make the uh, ethylamine? So the first thing you need to do is turn ethene into a halogenoalkane, so you could react it with something like hydrogen chloride or hydrogen bromide. So I've gone for reaction with hydrogen chloride, no specific uh, conditions for that, so you would just need react with HCl and the equation. And then to turn the halogenoalkane into the amine, you would react it with an excess of ammonia, but that needs to be dissolved in ethanol.